Hello and uh, welcome again today to the International Association of Woodcarvers. Today is November the 14th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and uh, we appreciate you taking time out to join us today. Uh, today we have a couple of special guests with us. We've got Mr. Dave Stetson. Uh, Dave's coming to us from uh, Arizona. He's the co-creator and founding member of the CCA. Uh, CCA started back in 1989 and he's going to be doing a demonstration today on uh, uh, Santa. Um, I also have on with us uh, Yaron Yadidia. Yaron's uh, gonna be talking to us about the new Wood Carving Academy that uh, he's launching now. Uh, this uh, academy is online and you'll be able to do classes uh, through that and uh, through a subscription service. So Yaron uh, will be talking about, talking about that at the end. Uh, real quick, I wanna go through uh, some of the online classes that are available to people that are on this, uh, this meeting right now. Uh, Dave Stetson will be doing a mail bus class coming up in December, so make sure if you're interested in that, you contact Dave so that you can sign up. Uh, Kevin Applegate, who's going to be our presenter next week, is going to be uh, doing some classes coming up. He has a Santa bottle stopper, a Santa ornament, and a shorty Santa that he's doing. Uh, you can find out the information on his webpage at Second Alarm Wood Carving. Uh, he also is doing some one-on-one -on -one carving coaching uh, with people that uh, want to carve along with him using one of his rough outs. So if you're interested in that, contact Kevin. Uh, Chris Hammock's doing his ongoing uh, design and carving classes. Chris was on with us a couple of weeks ago. Uh, if you're interested in those classes, contact Chris directly. Uh, Alec Lacoste is continuing to do uh, cottonwood bark classes. Uh, he has a subscription service that you can sign up uh, with him to do classes, so contact him. And then a new class that we were advised about uh, recently uh, Mr. Ryan Olson, who's going to be a presenter for us, is going to be doing a class in January. I'm not sure if he's decided uh, what he's going to do. He was trying to decide between a female bust and a full figure carving for that class. So uh, we'll wait and hear from Ryan as far as what he plans on doing with that class. Uh, but if you're interested, again, it's the second and third weekend of January. So reach out to Ryan and uh, be sure to sign up for that. Uh, before we get started with Dave, I just want to go through real quick the list that we have of presenters coming up. Uh, Kevin Applegate will be with us November the 21st. Uh, Mr. Jim Feather, who is on with us today, will be presenting on November 28th. Uh, Larry Green is going to come on on December the 5th. He's going to be carving one of his uh, Christmas tree ornaments. Uh, again, Ryan Olson is going to be on with us on December the 12th. And Wayne Larimore is going to be joining us on December the 19th. Uh, that'll take us right up to Christmas. Uh, we'll probably take off the week of Christmas and start again on the 2nd of January, which will be the first Saturday, I think, in 2021. Um, so we'll be lining up some other presenters for that uh, for that day going forward. So um, with nothing, uh, nothing further to talk about, let's go ahead and go over to Dave Stetson. Uh, again, Dave's going to be doing a demonstration today, and then Yarn will come in at the end and talk about his Wood Carving Academy. Thank you. Thank you, Blake. Um, I was uh, I was asked about doing a demonstration, and 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 the first thing that hit my head uh, was was uh, demonstrate what, and uh, because it's the season for Christmas coming up, uh, Santa's seemed to be the logical thing to do, but then it seemed like everybody was doing Santa's, so. Uh, it was, uh, you know, do I change my mind or do I stick with what I was going to do? Uh, so I'm going to do a Santa, but th this one's kind of uh, different in, in many respects. Uh, inspired by flat plane, but uh, truly was inspired by Wood Carving Illustrated magazine. They contacted me and said, can you do some projects for the magazine. And I said, yeah, sure. So I sent them a couple projects and it's, it's like, well, we need stuff for beginners. This is, this is kind of too complicated for the average carver. And it's like, well, crap, I don't want to do complicated. I mean, I don't want to do beginner stuff, but I can do that. Until I sat down and decided I was going to try to design something for beginners. And I realized that, uh, one of the hardest damn things to do is to design a simple project. I mean, a simple project that has some interest. And whether it's interesting or not is, you know, a matter of the of the observer, whether they like it or not. But 
uh, it needed to be interesting to me before I was going to spend any time with it. So I wanted to kind of show you how I went about designing this piece. Um, you got to spotlight the, the table now. You, people don't want to look at me, except for Hershey. He's likes the ends. Okay, good. So this is the piece I'm talking about. And uh, it's, it's pretty basic, but it's uh, inspired a lot by flat plane carving. Uh, so it can all be done easily with a knife. But uh, some things I want to point out to you is that uh, it really has no eyes, um, just little slits cut back in there. Uh, these were carved from an inch and a half block of wood. And uh, trying to keep them simple with the decorations and things that went on them. Uh, this has got a paint color that I picked up from a bird class that I sat in on to learn about airbrushing. And it's called quinacrin and gold, which is, uh, I had first looked at it, I thought, oh, that's burnt sienna. But then I found out, no, it's not burnt sienna when you water it down. So uh, it had an interesting color to it. Uh, the design on this one was inspired by uh, Zentangle. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that or not, but if you Google it or search it, uh, on Pinterest, there's books about it and it was popular a few years ago. I haven't heard a lot about it lately, but Zentangle is just a bunch of line drawings and ways to decorate things. And I thought it'd be cool if we could put it into a, into a Santa. Then I started trying to design some of my own patterns to, uh, to put on them and vary the colors a little bit. That's, this is the same pattern repeated. And this is a beard with a little less white in it. And uh, I was able to get away with that because we left the edges of the hat natural. And this is an idea of what not to do. You can get too carried away with the designs and they just kind of fall apart. Um, a simple piece needs a simple design. These are all carved on an inch and a half block of wood, an inch and a half stick, which I had a lot of. Uh, they come 12 inches long, so this one was six inches tall. So I get two of them out of one stick. But the way I came up with the design for this was keeping things basic and simple. So it's just an isosceles triangle, six inches tall, uh, inch and a half wide, but I've scaled the one down that I'm going to carve for you today because smaller is easier. This is the inch and a half block. This is an inch and a quarter block. And these guys were carved from a one inch block. So the, the smaller you go, the easier it is, but it gets a little more complex when you're trying to use a, a two inch bladed knife to do some detail. So I'll just, you know, try not to put you to sleep with too much about how to design it, just to show you what goes into this. So on a, this one happens to be five inches tall. You can see in red, the isosceles triangle that we designed it from. And then we added onto that triangle a little bit. So up here for the hat, down here for the hair and the, and the mustache and the beard. And then back to that triangle that we started with. We put the nose in here. And if you're familiar with Fibonacci, um, and you, if you're not familiar with Fibonacci, you can familiarize with, I'm not gonna tell you a whole lot about him, but uh, he had a, a plan and a design and a proportional proportions based on uh, uh, the Fibonacci principle that everything in nature is designed around. Um, so that's kind of where the head on this figure is based on the Fibonacci sequence. And uh, the Greeks used it for the golden triangle, but that, that puts the head in the right place. And it's something that we as humans uh, and nature 
Uh, and in fact, in the universe, the planets and the solar system, uh, all of it is based on that Fibonacci sequence. So this is the pattern that we're going to use. And if you want to carve one of these, um, I think you can probably take a screenshot of this to figure out what you want the pattern to look like. But it's uh, hopefully it has some eye appeal. Uh, did a show in uh, Dayton, Ohio, which is a pretty good selling show. And I had 20 of these things sitting on the table and uh, had they cleaned me out the first day. So uh, it's a good thing to sell. So people seem to like it. Um, you can carve it from a block just using a knife and just go in and start start cutting in and, and removing wood. But uh, if you have a bandsaw handy, you can shorten the amount of time that it takes to make these cuts dramatically by transferring the pattern onto the block and cutting it out with a bandsaw. So what it just took me to make that cut with the knife can be done a lot quicker. I could do the whole side of the block with a bandsaw in the same amount of time. So I'm going to use the piece that is already bandsawn, take some corners off, and just try to knock it down quick. Generally, the time to carve one of these is about 20 minutes. So if you can stay awake that long, you'll probably see the whole process. But the nice thing about using this Zoom app is that if in fact you do fall asleep, um, you can play back the recording. So. Uh, if you have any questions while I'm doing this, that would be a good time to jump in and ask. Yeah, when I uh, tried to record on Zoom, uh, I got a message that I needed to get permission from the host. Uh, yeah, I think the host is recording it for you. Okay. And then it'll be on YouTube, right? Right. Okay, thanks. How tall is the square part at the bottom? How tall is you, the square you, part at the bottom? you start the, the taper? Down here, you mean? Yeah. This, this little, this real important place down here that you're talking about? Yep. Um, it's about three eighths of an inch. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, so for anybody who's interested, I'll go ahead and let you know. You can go out on the International Association of Woodcarvers uh, Facebook page and find links to the YouTube videos for all of our videos that we've done so far. Uh, if you go to YouTube on a regular basis, you can also search us there and go out and watch the videos from there, either place. Uh, this one will be available probably sometime tonight. So if you're interested, you can go back and get it back. Okay, so the most prominent point on the face is going to be the nose. So everything I do up in the head area is going to be away from the nose. And I don't need to go very deep underneath the nose because that mustache is gonna fill out that area. So once I've got into the area where the mustache and the beard are going to be, and the nose, then I can start working my way around the block a little bit.
See, if I was a Ryan Olsen, I could be singing to you guys. But believe me, you don't want to hear me sing. Knocking these corners off is really pretty easy stuff to do. I'm going to throw me a center line down the block on the side. Probably should have started with that. Just so I know that I'm taking the same amount off the front as I am off the back. That center line is also going to let me know where the hairline is. So halfway back on the head is where the hair is going to come as it comes around the front edge of the ear that you're not going to see. I've always been trying to figure out um, what what's necessary in a piece and what isn't. Um, when you're trying to simplify a carving, that's the best, or at least the approach that I take. Um, if it doesn't need it, don't mess with carving it. Uh, years ago, I had students who would complain if we started to carve eyes because they got all psyched up and said, oh, eyes are so hard to carve. And so I just started designing pieces for them that didn't have eyes. And I said, oh, you can't do that. You got to put eyes on a carving. So I designed pieces for them. I dug one out to show you. So this was back in 91. We designed a head that you didn't have to put eyes on. And uh, now they're even on uh, Facebook, if you go on there and look at carvings people are doing, especially this time of year, it's amazing how many of them have just got a little bump for a nose underneath the hat brim. I don't want to say I started it, but you can draw your own conclusions. So I'm just separating the mustache and the on the front of the face and the hair on the back of the head. Split the difference and take the sides of the head in a bit. Get a nice angle on the face. And I have a question. Dave you, Dave, you are an awesome carver. Is it hard for you to do this simple um, carving for yourself because you are so you know, precision and beautiful work that you do? Is it hard for you to do something simple? Uh, it is. It, it is because I try to get more into it than I should. Um, an example of that was one of these little guys here. Oh, this one right here. I started going in with the pen to mark out a design or a pattern on it and it just got carried away. And by the time I realized I'd gone too far, it was too late because I'd already gone too far. 
So what I'm going to have to do with this is, is carve all of this off. It's the only way you can erase the pen. And the pen that I've started using now is uh, Micron. Uh, Micron makes a an archival ink pen. Um, I had used for a long time the Sharpies. It's an ultra fine point and it's called a permanent marker, but I can guarantee you it is not permanent. Um, my buddy Steve Prescott and I used to use these to sign all of our carvings. And I look back at carvings that were signed in the 80s and 90s, and you can't even read the names on them anymore. I've got a, a, a whole bunch of Steve's carvings that uh, his name is faded out, faded away. It's gone, you can't see them. So the, the pens are not a good thing to use. I don't know if this Micron is gonna be any better than the Sharpie. I would guess time will tell, but uh, yeah, that you know, it's you've all heard the old kiss principle. Keep it simple. Um, keep it simple, stupid, or whatever that last S stood for. Um, there's a lot of truth to that. So you you just have to keep things the simpler the better, and I think that's why we all seem to like the flat plane style a lot because it looks simple. It, it's not as simple as it looks, but it, you know, when you can see a cut and you look at something, you go, oh, I can see how they did that. That's, that looks really easy to do. I can just follow the cut by cut. I can see them on the carving. But uh, if you've ever had a class with Harley Russell, Harley's kind of the master of the flat plane style. And Harley would call it the complicated art of simplicity, which is, uh, if that's answering the question that you presented, um, it's just hard to do beginning stuff when you're not used to doing beginning carvings. We can, I mean, beginning doesn't mean it has to be simple, but I think you can uh, overcome the issue uh, if you consider the design. So if you, if you, if you, you know, make up for the simplicity with an interesting design, um, This is something I usually save till last. Because if you get carried away, it's easy to break that little knob off the top. But we got to get back in here and finish with the face and get the the beard here. Hey, Dave. Yes. I've had trouble. I, I like the the micron markers, but I've had an awful lot of trouble with those things, like drying up very quick and actually receiving them from the from the supply house uh, dry. Uh, what's your experience been? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I use them so much. It, it maybe, uh, maybe I just haven't given them a chance to dry out. Um, I don't know. And, and things tend to dry up pretty fast here. Uh, the, the humidity level in the Southwest is uh, extremely low. I keep the caps on them. I don't think they should dry up if they got the cap on, but I'm, I'm, I don't know. Anybody else got an experience with that? Dave, this is, a, this is Janet and Adina and I use those all the time for marking tiny things in classes and they dry up in a hurry for us. Um, so with, you know. We're careful about the caps. And I also have received them from the supplier already dried out. Yeah, I, I picked up a couple from just your regular, we have a staples here nearby. 
I've been using them for years. And, and as long as uh, what I do is to make sure the cap's on and then I turn it upside down. And that uh, seems to keep, they seem to be holding their ink very good. I don't know, works for me. That's a good idea. I'll try that for sure. Turn the cap upside down or the pen upside down? No, you just you turn the pen upside down. Like I've got a I've got a glass that holds my my pens when I'm not using them. So you just put it in upside down. I do the same thing with sharpies. Make sure that the cat it's it's pointing upside down. Hmm. Interesting. Well, gravity takes over and keeps it right at the vet, you know, right where the tip is. I'm learning something. Thank you. My pleasure. Hey, Dave, have you, you considered burning your initials in instead of using the Sharpie? Uh, I have on occasion burned my initials in, signed my name with a burner. Um, I, used to, I used to use the burner a lot to sign my name. And then I met a guy by the name of Joe Wanamaker. And I don't know if any of you guys remember Joe, but Joe could do calligraphy with a burner like unlike anybody. Um, it was amazing. And uh, everything I did looked like crap after I saw what Joe was doing. So I, I went to signing with the pen. And I thought we were doing really well until uh, I pull a piece off a shelf to look at it to see what year it was done. And it, you couldn't tell because it had faded out. And that was, I mean, we're talking, we're not talking like, you know, a hundred years. We're talking, we're, we're not, we're not going back that far. Dave, to you on smaller pieces, just put your initials. I've found, I tried to put my whole name sometimes and it just won't fit. You know, the, the problem with my name is that the letters all have curves in them. Um, so if, when you're just trying to, to write your name, uh, a lot of guys that sign their carvings have, uh, have names that have a lot of straight letters like A and E and T and L and I, but when you got a lot of O's and B's and S's and D's, the the uh, the curves are harder to harder to cut your name in. And twenty years from now. It's not going to matter to me. So that's not a very nice thing to say for because there's people out there that collect your work and you'd like for it to last a little longer. I've used, I've for a long time, I was signing with pencil. Uh, the graphite doesn't fade out. Uh, if you ever go into an antique shop and look at antiques, antique furniture, where they use pencils to mark the the drawers and the and the uh, dovetails and stuff, that pencil still shows up. After hundreds of years. But the pencil is kind of a is it's not as dramatic. You kind of okay. So we've got everything done but the eyes. Um, eyes on these things again. If we can keep it simple, 
I think they look a little better. So, and this is just a, a stylized shadow. So there's two cuts. The, the second cut is twice the length of the first one. And then I'll pop a chip out of it. So that's a three cut eye. I get one on the other side. It's about the same going in the other direction. Probably one of the harder things to do is to get a cut on one side to replicate the cut on the other when you turn it upside down. But uh, question for you, Dave. Fire away. Do you locate those like you do with a regular face, um, taking things in half and and picking it from there? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now underneath the eye, I've got a round ball for the for the nose. I'm gonna have a round ball for the cheek on each side, maybe. So the crow's foot, what we call a crow's foot coming out of the eye, kind of wraps around the top of the cheek. And a crow's foot actually comes from a bag under the eye. Now, this was an eye that I first learned to carve with uh, Harley Russell. And uh, I kicked it up a notch from what Harley was doing what I like to do is come in right underneath that little three cut eye that I just put there. And I'll make another cut just below that going straight in and cut down to it. And I'll leave a little wedge of wood down there to catch the light. So I'm, it's not going back in as deep as the, as the eye shadow that I put back in there. And get all the chips to fall out. So you can see that there's appears to be a little, maybe if I hold it closer, there appears, appears to be a little something more going on with that eye than the other one. So if I straight in underneath the eye, pop that chip out, and believe it or not, this is a technique that I learned from uh, going to Mount Rushmore. Uh, Guts and Borglum used light and chunks of granite in the heads of the presidents on the mountain uh, to catch light. And uh, that's kind of a, a technique that he used on those on those big heads on the mountain. So we use it on the little head here. Now, I like to give credit where credit's due. Uh, one guy who had probably more influence on me and Santa's than anybody was Pete Engler. Um, I didn't get to spend a lot of time with him, but every minute, that I got to spend with Pete, I treasured. Um, Pete was really good about sitting down and talking with you and showing you everything he knew. And uh, a couple of things I asked Pete about was uh, when it came to Santa's, I, by the time I was talking to Pete, I learned that uh, it's more what's your concept of a Santa that creates the look. And Pete Santa's all had a, a look that was unique. And uh, what I would try to do is uh, pick Pete's brain a little bit when I could. And asked him one day what was on in his mind when he was trying to do a Santa. What, what was he thinking about? What goes through his mind? And he said he wants his Santas to have childlike qualities. 
uh, physically uh, in the Santa itself and uh, conceptually in the expression of the Santa. So think in terms of children and you'll be successful with your Santas. So I'll just pass that on to you because there's a, a lot to be said there that uh, you have to kind of think about it and conceptualize what he was saying, but uh, it really uh, it really means a lot. The other thing about that Pete would do is put a little shadow under the cheek of all of his pieces right there, just a real tiny little shadow. And that kind of created an accentuation in the smile. As small, as small as this is, it's just the point of my knife creating just a little bit of a shadow under there, which really helps to spark that eye. Um, and the other thing is he wouldn't get real involved with the hair on the beards of his Santas. Sometimes he'd come in and just with a V tool or a knife, make a couple of, uh, just a, a couple of indications that, uh, that there's something going on in the beard. And that might be all he would do with a, with a beard. So when you're trying to keep things simple, that's one, one way to uh, approach that. And from this point on, it's just a matter of going around all surfaces that were uncarved. Have a little roughness from the bandsaw up on top of this knob here. We can just knock off the corners. Again, get rid of all the bandsaw marks. This is all bandsaw work here. And all bandsaw marks over here. You still awake, Hershey? He's muted, so he doesn't know how to answer. Just barely. <laughs> so I'm just putzing around cleaning stuff now, but that's it. He's done. So it's gonna take a trip to the bandsaw Cut this off, touch it to the uh, sander, smooth off the bottom. Hey Dave, can you talk a little bit about your, your painting, ceiling, and your method that you use? On painting? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Um, I will... Uh, I will sit down and paint this uh, this afternoon on Facebook. Will that work for you? Yeah, that'd be great, Dave. Yeah, that'd, that'd be good. Thanks. I mean, first thing first thing I do is just uh, saturate it with boil and seed oil. I use a foam brush to do that uh, straight out of the can. Um, let's see, detail this mustache a little bit here. The more I look at this, the more I start playing around with it. And this is where I have to say, oh, that's enough. Otherwise I'm going to overdo it. When you get to the point where you're worried about overdoing it, would you lay it down with the other ones that you've painted? 
No, probably not. I don't have any other ones painted. Oh, the ones I was showing you earlier, I guess you're talking about. Uh, they're different size, so. You mean for comparison? You can see the yes. difference. Yeah. You can see the difference of the size here. That's a six inch and a five inch and a four inch. Well, that's cool. It's all the same. It's just like I decided to carve this one because it was easier physically than to carve the big one. And the little one is, I mean, this one in the middle is easier to see. It's like the it's like Goldilocks and the three bears, you know. One bed's too soft. I kind of got the impression that it was a little bit smaller than the other um, that you started out with. But this this pattern is for this one, the middle one. On the green one, is the face left natural from the linseed oil? Uh, there's some burnt sienna in the shadows, corners of the nose here, mm -hmm. and eyes. And I usually put a little bit of a, a very light rouge or blush uh, in the cheek and the nose. That might be uh, might be uh, uh, my brain's cooked. I'm gonna to have to stop teaching. I can't remember the names of things. Uh, it's a red, <laughs> <laughs> real light red color. <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. I really like that mustache, it's beautiful. So I'm just trying to keep it simple. This, this mustache here, I took part of it off. I started to lay it out like this. Which was kind of symmetrical. And then I went in and decided to knock that corner out right there, which pulls up one side of the mustache and kind of turns his mouth to one side a little bit. Nothing complicated. Dave. Yes. On the uh, nose, you made more or less a round mound, but you didn't go up on the sides. You just took and uh, put right the texture up on the, uh, just around the nose. You just cut around the nose for the grooves and you didn't go up to the eyes, it looks like. You didn't put a line in there. No, uh-uh. You mean from the okay. corner of the nose to the yeah. corner of the eye? Yeah. There isn't a line there. That's what I thought. I just wanted to check with you to make sure. Thank yeah, you. No, that, that area on the face is always smooth. Okay. Always smooth. And I used to tell my students that. And I was teaching a class in Sacramento. And a guy standing there looking at me, grinning at me. And he had a big old crease from the corner of his eye down to the corner of his nose. The only guy I've ever seen like that. <laughs> ever. And he's he's gone now. So... He may have been the only one on earth. Was on that last question, was it, do you mean like defining or bringing out the bridge of the nose? Like not necessarily a crease, but did you mean like he didn't actually shape the bridge up? in? Yes, yeah, about the bridge. From a bridge, it's more yeah. of just. So you got a nose here and it comes around to the cheek and we got the eyes sitting in here and I think he's talking about from I think he's talking about from here to here yes yes is that what you're talking about yes sir yeah there aren't any lines there that's always a smooth transition surface from the nose to the cheek in that area no so not a line but I think just I think what he was asking is if you, you didn't actually carve so that he had a bridge, like his nose has a bridge. It's more of just where you have the mound of the nose and then the eyes are kind of set in, but you didn't define the bridge of the nose. Is that right? 
Uh, That's what I was going after, but I could see what he's doing. Oh, okay, so you're talking yeah. brow you're talking about up here? No, I was just talking about the eye sockets coming down to the outside of the nose, and that you drew it there perfectly, and you explained it perfectly. I understand exactly what you did. Thank you. Okay. Just trying to keep it simple. <laughs> the simpler, the better. So the eyebrows on the green one look like they really stand out. Is there an actual cut there? No, they're just paint. It's just paint. There's no cut on that. It's just paint. Cool. So when I was when I was doing the beard with an antique white, and I did the hat, and I went back and I put some more on the beard, and I looked at it and I thought maybe it needs a little white up there for an eyebrow. So I just laid it on there, and it's that's it. Now, I decided I wanted to try one where the hat was bent over, and it was a waste of time. So I played around with emphasizing a little more flow in the beard. Again, another waste of time, but that's how you find out. I think, I think simpler is better. When you start trying to get fancy, trying to kick it up a notch, it falls flat on its face. Yeah, I just I just like the simple ones better. So that's all I got to talk about. All right, Dave. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, we're going to go ahead and switch over to Yar Yaron. Let me make sure I get that right. Uh, oh, could you I work directly with Yaron to, to uh, develop the Wood Carving Academy uh, that he's going to be talking about? Uh, he's worked with several carvers, and he's going to get right into that. So, uh, thank you, Ron, for being on with us. I have a technical question for Dave. Oh, okay. Fire away. I'm, I, I'm curious. Um, what kind of a setup do you have to? To show your carving. In other words, you've got your main where we are right now, but do you have a auxiliary camera of some kind? Yeah, it's called an iPhone. Got it. Okay, and you just, you're able to tie that into the Zoom. I logged on to Zoom with my iPhone and I logged gotcha. on to Zoom with my laptop. Gotcha. Okay, got it. Thank and that you. technical question should have been asked of Yarn, who was already on. Because he knows a hell of a lot more about it than I do. Well, I can turn a computer on pretty good. Without that man, I am nothing. Thank you. Will the pattern for this Santa be on YouTube also? It's on the video. You can just take a screenshot. OK, thanks. It's also in the December 2016 issue of Wood Carving Illustrated. There you go. There you go. Issue. Okay. Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, having me here. My name is Yaron Yadidia. It's a strange name because it's an Israeli name. Moved to the US in 2005 and been having fun here. So, uh, got a few of the teachers of the Wood Carving Academy here. I see them here. I don't know if they can say hi, but uh, I see uh, some of them uh, a while back. And I hope you guys can hear me well. A while back, I started collecting things. I collect a lot of things. And uh, some of them are wood carving. Some of them are mallet magazines. And some of them are old videos of uh, wood carvings. So this one is the uh, carved the cowboy head with Claude Bolton for uh, the uh, National Carvers Museum. So. Eventually, I, I understood that these things were kind of hard to watch and people are, don't have their uh, VHS. People are no longer getting DVDs and most of the knowledge that the woodcarvers have are either in their head or in one of those VHS DVDs things and pretty soon that'll go away. So uh, really wanted to find a way to preserve the knowledge 
And then uh, 2020 came along and uh, kind of stopped all of the uh, wood carving workshops. And that not only uh, hurt us, but we we're not able to travel and, and learn from those instructors. It also hurt the instructors themselves. They trying to find a way to get their knowledge out and uh, even earn some, uh, some living during this time. And so I came up with the idea of uh, putting this together on a website that'll, that'll have all of the knowledge there and uh, will also benefit the wood carvers, the teachers. And so uh, this uh, website of uh, wood carvers, uh, wood carving academy uh, came to mind and uh, with the help of the teachers and Dave was the person that was really driving the, uh, the uh, leading the efforts of uh, going and doing online workshops. I put together a website and it's called woodcarvingacademy.com. I'll try and uh, share my screen now. Hopefully you guys can see it. There we go. Let me just open up a new page here. And it's woodcarvingacademy.com. You can use your laptop, you can use your tablet, you can use your phone. It'll show differently, but you'll still be able to see um, the whole thing through it. And so what we have here basically is a couple of pages. Uh, we have a bio page for each of the teachers. We have uh, started with a, a few teachers, one of the leading ones that have graciously provided their videos or have committed to provide videos pretty soon. And some of them are on the call here today, so I want to thank them. And uh, so let's, for example, click on uh, Janet's bio page here. We, we uh, see a little bit of information about her. Um, uh, some samples of her work, how to visit her website, contact her possibly on Facebook. We have then a few samples of her videos and then a list of the videos that she has with us on, on the website. I'm going to try and play a sample here. This one is everybody can access when they get on the site. It's tiny here, but if you click on the bigger screen, it should be a little bigger. I'll try and mute myself here and I hope you can hear. Hello everyone, I'm Janet Cordell and welcome to Wood Carving Academy. I'm very pleased to be on the teaching staff here and excited to see what a force for wood carving this site will become. I love teaching and hope to be able to share some useful videos and workshops from the Wood Carving Academy site. But anyway, there's the nostrils. And here's your mouth. This is the opening line of the mouth. The mouth actually curves down a little bit from the front view. It's impossible almost to ever get that carved down to anything that looks good. You need a few big planes to start to make sure that the lips are placed properly on the face and are going in where you want them to be. But you don't want to have so much angle here that you're turning them wrong side out and making them look wrong. So, one second. Hey, this was it. You guys can hear me now, I hope. So this was just a sample video of one of the videos that's hosted here. That's uh, Janet Cordell trying, uh, or trying to teach us how to make uh, perfect lips. So uh, if you visit the website now, you can go and see each one of the teachers and which videos they have. Um, there, there would be a list under, under the teacher's name um, and with, the, with the current videos that they have. And there'll be some sample videos, and um, and then for the next step, you'll you will need to sign up to the uh, to the academy. The way it works is we have a subscription base. It's like the Netflix for wood carvers, where you sign up for a monthly, uh, quarterly, or annually um, subscription, and then uh, with with the money that you're providing, 
uh, it gets shared between all of the teachers that um, that are teaching here according to to the videos that you're watching so if you if you go to the video section here you'll see the different categories that we have um, in, in in caricatures um, bird carvings and I'll, and I'll go into some of them in a second I just wanted to show you the overall uh, different types and some of them will be uh, this will be expanded this is we are, we are just starting there's also a link here where you can see the entire uh, portfolio of videos that is currently here or that is uh, coming soon depending on 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 uh, the teacher's ability to create new videos and share it with us the next portion is you'll have to be to be signed up for and but i'll 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 give you a, a look in the uh, in the background and so if you're not signed signed up you won't be able to see this but once you sign up this is what you'll get so for example, if you get into caricature carving, you'll, you'll get uh, to a page where you can see uh, a video. So this one on the left, for example, is uh, the introduction to caricature carving with Floyd Radigan. Again, uh, this is, this is uh, you're, you're, you're able to play it right from there, or you're also able to uh, increase it to a full screen. Oh, we're, we're, and this, and this one, for example, uh, Floyd is, is explaining the basics of character oh. carver. On the the one on the right is Dave is taking you through the steps of of uh, creating a, a caricature hand, and and so when you scroll, you'll go through each one of the different videos. Some of them are uh, cut into a, a few sections because they're they were uh, they were longer. So we wanted to make sure that you can return to viewing where you left off, and then uh, a lot of those videos are. Uh, are available there from the different teachers. You know, some, some have been created in the past, some have been created recently. If I go back here, the other, the other videos that are here, for example, if I go into carving in, in bark, then you'll see the different uh, bark carvings that uh, videos that are available. Um, if you're a character carver or a chip, chip uh, carver, uh, this allows you to also learn uh, to carve uh, different different uh, types of carvings, and this is what's great about it. You're you're able to basically you know move on and 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 learn new things. So if, if I'm a character carver and I want to learn about uh, chip carving, I'll go into this section, and and, uh, and we have D and, and we have Caroline uh, Holbrook here with us. Uh, thanks for joining the call, uh, Caroline. And uh, she has put together a lot of videos on, on, uh, on chip carving. So you know, if you're already signed up, that would be a, a good thing to learn uh, something new out there. If, uh, if, uh, if you like uh, wood spirits and, and walking sticks, we got uh, Mark, uh, Mark Garrick, uh, uh, Gergak uh, had, uh, had sent out his DVDs. We have, uh, we have uh, Pat's videos, uh, Pat Moore DVDs, uh, and uh, a lot of other teachers, Stu Martin. I, 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 uh, I probably won't remember all of them, but uh, they've they've done a, a great work at uh, at uh, creating content, and uh, and now uh, it's it's available to share. We have uh, we have Donna with the uh, wood carving uh, birds, hummingbirds, and uh, and a peeking mouse, and uh, it's about fifty videos right now. Uh, many many hours. Of, of watching and then uh, the teachers will create new content and uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get that uploaded as well. The other thing that I'm doing uh, with the Wood Carving Academy is uh, helping teachers uh, bring in workshops to students. So there's a specific page where you can go and find all the workshops that are being delivered online and sign up for them either through uh, their website or through emailing uh, the teacher. There's upcoming workshops that we have here. The, right now you can only see up to January, but basically we're the, every, we got stuff booked up all the way up to March. And then if you're a student, eventually you can go in here and you can access the recording. And this, this will take you here to the back, back where other people can't see that. Only the people who attended the workshop can see that at this point. And for a month or so, you can you can attend in, in, in a, recording and just watch the recording again and and that'll help you with uh, with uh, carving your stuff 
And eventually we'll work out a way for the, if you're signed up to the Wood Carving Academy, you'll be able to see some of, of those workshops according to what the teachers will decide. And uh, so this is, uh, pretty, this is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, um, I'd be glad to answer. Otherwise we'd like to invite you to visit the Wood Carving Academy and, uh, and join. So if we've taken a class already, are we already signed up or not? So if you took one of the workshops and, and uh, the teacher allows you a certain amount of time to watch the workshop, once that am amount of time is ended, you'll need to be a member of the Wood, Wood Carving Academy and then you'll be able to see the workshop, yeah. So is that automatically free or not or what? Is not. It is not. It is it, for the for the workshops. While while you took the workshop, you you had a specific amount of time. So, for example, uh, Dave's workshop for September ended in the uh, ended a few days ago in, in November. Then access to that recording is ended. If you want to continue and watch the recording, we edit it. It's it's not the same recording anymore. And then now it's becoming a part of the of the videos that are part of of the of the website. You'll have to be a member of the website, a paying member of the website, and then you can you can freely see the workshop. Other people will not be able to. Even members right now are not able to. Just just the people that have seen the workshop, have attended the workshop, can see it. So how do we sign up for it? So to sign up for the website, you just click on login, sign up. Um, right now, I'm I'm. I'm I'm already logged in, so I won't be able to, to do that. Give me one second here. I'll try and switch gears here. Basically, if you go to the website and you click on login, and then you click on sign up. That'll give you the options. Just a heads up, you're only sharing the previous window. Oh, sorry about that. Let me give me give me one second here. Thanks for that. Share. So going back here, I'm gonna go into the login screen. And then I'm going to sign up. And you'll see the the way it works is if you sign up for just a month, it's 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 uh, it's a monthly fee. It, you'll be charged each month. If you do the one year, the annual, you get about it goes down to about nine dollars a month. So that's that's uh, we kept the prices here for from uh, previous versions of uh, watching videos online with different sites that came up about ten years ago. And so these are the same prices and you got to keep in mind, most of this is going directly to the teachers. It is a, it is a site for wood carving teachers based on the revenue that comes in. It's mostly dispersed and given to the teachers, the amount of videos that you're seeing. And so uh, this, this is how you sign up. I have a request. Can, can you hear me okay? Yep. I'm pretty unstable here. Um, I, I would appreciate it if you could recruit an instructor demonstrator who does the uh, Native American Pacific Northwest style carving. That makes sense. If you know of, uh, of teachers, and, and we're working to get all kinds of teachers in, if you know of any teachers, they can come in here or you can go in here into the contact area, contact us, send me a note. I'll, I'll reach out to the teachers. We have a few okay. teachers in the, right now that have agreed to start sending content. We just need to, you know, have, before we put them up on the website, we want them to start making content. But uh, Pacific Northwest is a great, uh, especially because I'm located near Seattle. So that'll, that'll be uh, awesome to get a, a teacher for, for that specific. Uh, yeah, where, where are you? I'm in Port Townsend. I'm I'm in uh, actually Redmond. I'm right next to the Microsoft campus. I used to work oh, for Microsoft for many years. So, okay. Well, there's a guy in Seattle. His name is Joe McConnell. Okay. 
and I will send you contact information. That would be great. If anybody knows of, of other teachers as well, feel free to put it in the contact, contact us, uh, just, you know, send the details. We'll get, we'll get the teachers aboard. There's a lot of teachers that are sitting at home now and because of the restrictions of COVID, they are not traveling. They're not traveling. That means that, you know, they're not getting paid. So getting them on this would help, will help us with uh, yeah, getting their I'll, knowledge and will help I'll, them. I'll give him a call. He's been teaching for years. He's a very good carver, but also a very good teacher. That is, that sounds good. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, he lives in Sammamish. I think I've heard of him, but yeah, go, uh, I, go for it. Yep, we'll love to help and, and get him aboard. Do we have uh, to have a Commodore 128 to access the site? So I, I did, if you could, uh, can you spot, spotlight me, uh, my, my, my video here? Sorry. I want to, I want to show this. This is the server that everything is running on. Uh, Blake, I don't know if you can. Yeah, Ron, you should be spotlighted. I have you spotlighted right now. Okay. Let me stop sharing then. Sorry for that. Okay. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so this is the server. This is where we have everything running on. And every time you guys are trying to reach and click on a video, I run in the back, I grab the VHS and I, and I stick it into the Commodore 128 here. And this is how the website is, is actually working. So, and yeah, so yeah. No guys, everything's running on the internet. It's the cloud now. I'm having fun with uh, Janet and, and uh, Caroline uploading videos and downloading videos and, and making sure that you guys get the best videos uh, that are available there. Because this is knowledge, like Dave said, is carving. If he signs it, who cares in 20 years? But in 20 years, we want the kids to see. And uh, yeah, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan's, Ryan's promised to send out some videos too. So we're going we're gonna to get a lot, of, uh, a lot of videos there for you guys. So, and it'll stay there for a long time. Question. On the setup, going to the uh, academy is is there a little bit of free stuff where a guy can learn how to do this or look at it a little bit or so if you sign up for the so browsing the website you can look at it you can look at the some of the sample videos there but there there isn't a free section stuff that stuff is mostly shared by the teachers so for example dave Stetson would record something and they would put it on his Facebook page. Okay. And then we might catch it and then we share it on another Facebook page. So I also have, uh, back in 2008, I started a caricature carvers uh, Facebook uh, group. And uh, in the beginning we had five, six people. Some teachers were there. Remember Phil and Vicky Bishop were there. Vicky was there in the beginning and some others. Uh, through the years, it grew. We we're almost 10,000 people now, now 9,500 members. So, I mean, you go there and you search and you can see some of the free stuff that is available. You know, this, there's a lot of free stuff out there. Um, if you search YouTube and it's, you know, it's getting uh, a lot of eyes, but the, the quality content that the teachers are creating, you can never, you know, it's, we, we want to make sure that they get paid for, you know, the, the, the teachings that they do and that's how that's how we do it and uh, well, well the reason i asked was i wanted to i have given the website for to mark club to watch these every day every sunday or saturday and then also i was just looking at making some notes to give to our newsletter to tell them about this because people are looking for this stuff so i just wanted to be able to tell them you can go to here and you can get a little bit of an idea what's there for sure, yeah. You can okay. you can freely surf the in the entire website. You can catch a few of the teachers, a few of their samples, and uh, this might be a good idea. Maybe I'll add a little free section because every now and then some teachers create a free content that is shareable. You know, if a, if a teacher creates a three three hour DVD and they they sell it, they they really you know that's how they make a living. So they we want to make sure that this content is is paid for and then we we you know we we share it with the teachers uh but the free content yeah that's a good point uh, thank you Ron, when i used to tell people about uh about the carbon online site that used to be that this is kind of taking the place of uh, 
for a monthly subscription, it's about the same as a Big Mac. And, you know, if you get the whole meal with the fries and the Coke. So, and for a month, you can w look at everything and decide whether it's something you want or don't want. So it's not, like, it, it's not like it's going to break the bank to take a look at what's out there. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, it, 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 it'll, it'll be worth, worth your time. There's hundreds of hours there that you can watch. So for sure, sorry about the dog here. It's lunch. Pacific West, Northwest is 1 p.m. here. So it's lunch. He knows where, sorry. Hey, you're on. If somebody signs up for a year um, service, uh, do they get all the new content that you put out there during that year as well? The, the content is uh, available to all of the subscription, all of the subscribers, as long as there's a member. Every time there is new content, it's 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 bringing brought in. The yearly, the annual is the perfect gift for the holidays right now. It's about a hundred dollars less than it would be for you to you know do a monthly thing, and it's perfect. And so yeah, absolutely, that is that is somebody that if somebody doesn't know what you want for Christmas, that would be the hint to send them. So here, this is what I want. Send them the link and yeah, for sure. And then you have to you have to keep in mind all the time that this is helping all of the teachers uh, with, with the videos, right? That's, that's the main motivation here. Are these rates gonna stay the same for a while? Sorry? Are these rates gonna stay the same for a while? Yes, they're, they're they're staying the same. We are keeping them like that. Eventually, maybe the annual will go up, but for now, that's that's the rates. You're on, I'm sorry, they... I have to ask this question because there was a doorbell when I got up uh, that somebody came into my door. Uh, the the you, so you pay for a year subscription, and each class has an additional cost to it um, that you sign up for that. So. So this is two separate items. First, if you sign up for a year, you have access to all the videos that are created and uploaded. The okay. workshops are separate. If a teacher is doing a workshop, to attend that workshop, you don't even have to be a member of our site. You can just go to that page and sign up with a teacher. These, these uh, are uh, virtual. They're in the computer. But when you attend one of those, you get to interact with the teacher, ask questions, stuff that you cannot do. Yes. You know, face to face. You can eventually send them an email. The teachers uh, of the academy will accept your questions because you know, they're know, they know that you are watching their videos. You can also go to their website. There are links from each teacher's page. Uh, sometimes you need a rough out. Sometimes you need a cutout to do the carving that you're learning. So you can head to the teacher's website, maybe get the, the rough out or the cutout and, and then interact with the teachers. They're all very friendly. I've, okay. I've worked with them for a while now. And, but for the workshops, uh, this, this is separate. So you, you, know, you wanna sign up, sign in and, and so forth. If the teachers eventually agree to release some of the workshops because they're not doing them anymore, then we'll add them to the website as content. It'll, see, it'll say, you know, Dave Stetson, uh, uh, Santa, uh, 2020 recording, you know, and, and something like that. And then you'll be able to see it. But that'll be, you know, maybe uh, when Dave decides he does not longer want to do an online workshop. Thank you. Thank you. You're on. Is the, is the website active today? Can we sign up today or tomorrow? or Sign up. Last night we went live because... Blake said, you got to come online and show it to everybody. And I'm like, okay, there's a deadline. This site has been worked on uh, for the last, I think, five or six months. The processing of the videos, it takes a lot of time to transfer them to a, you know, to a viewable, accessible. But yeah, it's live. Go ahead and sign up. I'm logged in there right now. And I cannot find where you would sign up for the monthly, quarterly, yearly subscription. So when you try and log in, if if you do not have an account, and I, I can show that again, you go and click the sign up. There's a there's a sign up uh, area. Let me just share my screen again here. You click the login, and then right here it says sign up. And if you click the sign up. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm already logged in under the free one. I'm okay, so if you're a member, uh, then you'll need to get to your uh, member section and then you just add it to your subscription. And I, and I, I can't show it right now here because I have no way to get there. But if you're a member and, and you get to your member page right after you log in, it takes you to your member page, then all you need to do is add. But let me do this. I can copy here. You see this, this it says subscription dash plan. And I'll copy that to the chat here. And then if you click on that, you'll be able to. Um, is there a way to log off and log back in? That's a good question. I, I won't be able to show it right now, but you you, you can from your, uh, from your. Uh, See, when I click that, it doesn't, if I click login, sign up, it just goes back and says member login and that's it. Right. Yeah, there is, there is a logout page. It, I'm, I, I don't know exactly how to get to it right now, but it, it should be log off or I'll, I'll, uh, I'll fix that. So it'll, it'll give you a button. This, this is why we're doing this. So we can, Clear out yeah. all the bugs. Because I I tried closing out my screen and coming back and it keeps me logged in so I can't get back to where I can look at the prices for the subscription. I'm only that, logged that, in. That's a good point. I have the free part because that's part of the upcoming class. And so I just pasted the link uh, where to get to the subscription on the chat here. And so that that'll that'll you can use that for now. And then I'll make sure that there is a logout button so you can log out and and get to your or or get to your member member area page, and then you edit from there. If you're if you're already signed up because you did a workshop, that's usually the, the case. And you're wrong. They can contact you outside of this meeting if they uh, need additional support. Is that correct? Absolutely. There's there's the contact us on the page itself, and uh, there's an email support at woodcarvingacademy.com, and uh, I'll be happy to help. Thank you for your time and taking, thank you, Blake and the uh, International Association of Woodcarvers for having me here. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thanks once again, uh, Dave and uh, Yaron for taking your time out and joining us today. Uh, I think uh, Yaron's page is gonna be very beneficial to a lot of us who uh, are constantly looking for new content and new ways of uh, learning. So uh, make sure you go out and check that out. Uh, I agree with you, Yaron, it's a, it'd be a good Christmas uh, gift something a gift that keeps on giving so uh, everybody needs to try to sign on with that if you can uh, Dave did you want to uh, try to do another short demo or you, you think we're short on time really up to you uh, I've got time but it I don't know what what you guys have got for time so uh, anybody that wants to stick around we'll hang on here for a little bit and uh, Dave has another uh, small carving that he's going to do. Um, it's the other picture that we posted in the advertisement during the week. Uh, if you want to hang on, you're welcome to hang around. Um, again, for those of you who decide to sign off, we appreciate you taking your time out with us. Uh, again, we uh, get on here every week at 3 p.m. on Saturdays, so feel free to join us uh, next week uh, where we'll have Kevin Applegate. And uh, Dave, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you. When will this be on so we can do it again? Uh, we should have this video out sometime this evening. It takes a little while for us to download the video and then upload it to uh, to the different site. So sometime this evening, we'll have it out there for you. It'll be on YouTube? It'll be on YouTube and Facebook. Okay. Okay, Dave. Okay. All right, here's, here's another little one we, that uh, I didn't know how much time was going to be uh, required today, so I prepared a couple of uh, demos for you. Uh, this is another little guy that goes back to, uh, eh, it goes back a ways. Uh, some of these were carved in 2009. 2010, 2012. So they go back a ways. Uh, this is back when uh, Michelle was doing a lot of painting for me. And uh, you can see that just a, a stylus with some dots to, to fancy them up. But it, again, it's another little simple thing. I, it, this is again from Wood Carving Illustrated, uh, a beginner piece. 
back when uh, we were trying not to have to carve eyes. So uh, I did this one way back when and uh, resurrected it for Wood Carving Illustrated. So uh, I had to practice a little bit so I could remember how to do it. So I've done a few of these. Um, so we'll just uh, give a go at it here and see what happens. Um, so this is free for you. They may not, uh, it may or may not be recorded, I don't know. But uh, so we'll just see what happens. Uh, the way I do this, um, again, uh, if, if you got a little piece of uh, plastic stuff sitting around that you can draw a pattern with, and I had one sitting here a minute ago and uh, panicked and lost it. So it'll pop up somewhere. Uh, we're just going to go in and there's a pattern on here, whether you can see it or not. There we go. So here's a here's a pattern cut out of plastic just to give you a, a quick idea of, of what we're doing. This is uh, this is from a strawberry clam shell, I think they call it the plastic package that strawberries come in uh, or cookies. If you get cookies from Costco, they have a nice, uh, or the, the better ones is uh, the cheese Danish from Costco. You can get a really nice piece of plastic from them. So I buy them for making pattern templates. So on this one, is, I just called it a stick Santa. Arizona Stick Santa or something like that. Uh, I couldn't tell you what year it came out in Wood Carving Illustrated, but uh, almost almost an identical uh, piece to this one came out a few years after I did this one, and it was uh, called a wizard. So there's not a lot of difference between a, a wizard and a Santa evidently. So let's see right here we got hands. This is the front view. And down here we got robe and a little beard coming down between the hands. Um, with this Doing it like this, see, I can put the pattern to get to the hand and follow the robe. And let's see, arm here, shoulder, and then robe. And there, that's about it. Okay, so this. Carves up pretty quick. I don't have anything cut out on the bandsaw for this. So, but I, what I've done is taken this pattern and transferred it to the block of wood to work with. So, if I work from the back side first, get some of this wood off from here, closer to the table so you can see what I'm doing. I'll look up and see how many people are still watching. Some, of, some folks had to go to dinner, some folks had to take a nap, and some of you are already napping. So if anybody needs a wake up call, let, let us know. Uh, I can tell right now I didn't strop my knife before I got started on this. I'm going in under the hand and I'm going in at the base. I like to put a little base on these things. It really helps them uh, from a design standpoint, I think. That's just my opinion. Um, these also make good little, uh, they can sit on a shelf, but you can put a little hanger on them in there small enough they can be an ornament on the tree as well. So 
So a little stock cut at the base, right here from the elbow to the hand. Up the side. I don't know how big these guys are, four or five inches. But they can be done any size. So I'm going to end up putting a little staff in his hand. So if I put the staff in his right hand, I got to make sure there's enough room to drill a hole in the top of that hand. So I try to be aware of that. And if you're trying to leave the base on these, it's it's better if you've got two on a stick, you got something to hang on to. Makes it a little easier to carve. Again, if you've got questions, don't be afraid to ask. Dave, what are the dimensions? Is that about one and a half square? Um, this is a one by one. Okay. And the figure is four inches. So the, stick is, so the stick is eight inches. Okay, so I get two of them out of it. Uh, let's see. Okay. So I got the hands and the arms pretty well established. Round off the back of the head a little bit here. And this guy's wearing a, his Santa robe is kind of like a, a monk's robe, you know, with the, a kind of like a hoodie, robe, hoodie combo thing. Um, just happens to be what it is. And let's see. Okay, so from the face here, I'm going to go right up the side of the head and I want to leave the nose. So I put a little circle where the nose is. So as I go up the side of the head, I'm not knocking this off about 45 degree angle all the way up till it reaches the nose. Then I'm gonna go in above the nose and push this back. Run an angle back on this thing. Picked a hard piece of wood. And I'm going to taper this from the shoulder across the head going up toward the top of his hat. When I get about halfway, then I'm going to let this hood flop over. I'll put an angle on it. I'm repeating the same angle going that I went up here, but I'm stopping at the hood where it flops over. Round off the back of his head a little bit. I'm going to come from the top of the nose right down to the inside corner of the elbow. This was 
a design element. After I carved about 20 or 30 of these, I redesigned it so I could do this. It just helped me figure out where things were a little easier. So again, top of the nose, right down to the inside corner of his elbow. Now the hoodie that he's got, the, the front of it is kind of folded up. So we can set the top edge of that. And we're gonna come down here to his arm. Set the corner of his mitten. Just drawing a line with the tip of my knife and pulling out a chip. Cut under the edge of his beard. Yeah, this back here is kind of his tush. Reset that base. Get carried away with one area and I forget to look at what else is going on here. So that's his mitten, and that's his robe. Cut out under the edge. I designed this, so don't ask me what this little flop thing is on his hat because I haven't got the clue. Hey Dave, what's the little flop thing on the hat? I don't have a clue. You got a name, you can come up with something. Was that Ryan? It's his tool. It's his tool. Was that you, Ryan? Yeah, that's me. That's me, Dave. Wow. Recognize that voice. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited for your upcoming Zoom class, Dave. I can't wait. Man, I have done so many heads for that. Ryan, did you uh, decide what you were going to do for your class in January? Yep, I did. the The uh, women, the girl in the hot tub, was the winner. Okay, we'll start uh, promoting that. I'll get you a picture. All right, thanks. Girl in the hot tub. <laughs> they chose that over a guy in a coat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
You know, I I don't know how many of you guys know who Ryan is, but uh, he's he's the guy. You know, if I, if I could get inside somebody's brain and figure out how their mind's working, he's the one I'd like to know. We got to get my, together. My psychiatrist said the same thing, Dave. Yeah, well, we got to get together one of these days, buddy. I don't know what your schedule is, you know, you guys that are working. Hey, Ryan, can you attend his class pretty soon, right? January. So we're just about done with this guy. Now I got to yeah, get into get... the important stuff. Go ahead, Ryan. Nope, that was me. I, was well, I just, Dave, I'm intrigued. I'm always intrigued by your designs. I'm always intrigued by how well you design things for the younger carver, you know, like your, uh, your uh, little, your little ombre and this, they're quick ones that, that you can do. I just, I think they're, it's a great design. It's not really for younger carvers. It's the old guys with younger minds. This little cut right here, this is kind of kind of something I maybe stole from Sarah or something. Just to get that little mustache and mouth in there. But stealing is what uh, stealing is what carvers do. And I guess it's okay. Prescott used to tell me that the, the better carvers are the ones that steal the most ideas from other people. And I thought, that doesn't sound very nice. But he taught me to appreciate the fact that it was okay to steal. So I'm still doing it. Thank you, Steve, if you're watching. So where'd the sand guppy come from? Uh, the Hacienda River. It's just uh, west of Phoenix here a little bit on the way out to Litchfield Park. It's, there's, a, there's a river out there that uh, they had the uh, Hacienda Ferry used to cross right about in an area about Indian School. Um, it's a dry river most of the year, but when the monsoons hit, they have to, uh, had, used to have to ferry people across. They didn't have a decent bridge then. And, uh, sand guppies, that, it's a monsoon fish. So they, they kind of hibernate in the sand until the monsoons come and flood the river. And you can go out there and see them swimming around. Because they only have about a few days to, to mate and eat and breed and all the things they have to do before it dries up. So anyway, uh, high school biology class, we went out there and captured some of them in jars. They didn't live very long. Okay, now uh, I've got a little thing here called a pin vise. Some of you will know what it is, some of you won't. It's a, a handle that holds a small drill bit. And I don't know what size bit this is. It's probably 330 seconds or something like that. But if you try to drill this with a drill, the chuck would come in here and hit right where the head and the face is. So you wouldn't be able to get it through this little hole that's right here. So we want to put a hole in this hand. So you just kind of start working it in. And you can press and push and twist all at the same time. 
and you can stab yourself even with a drill bit and it's not a very pleasant feeling. So it, every once in a while, I'll just hold my finger on the drill bit and then measure to see, see I'm almost all the way through. So I don't wanna be pushing really hard right now. So I'm gonna back off a little bit and watch right there at the bottom of the hand as I spin it, see, there, there it comes. Now, when Michelle and I were traveling all over the country um, and I would carve these things, I would, uh, I would go outside the motorhome and find a little bush or something that had a stick or a twig. And I would make the staff for these Santas. So I got staffs, Santa staffs from all over the country. Um, but we're not traveling now, so I have to take sticks and run them back to the bandsaw, cut them down small and then sand them to get them to fit through the hole. So it's just a matter of taking a piece of sandpaper, maybe, fold it over and get this stick small enough to fit in the hole. Now, if you want, you can carve these with a knife. The problem is trying to get wood grain that's really straight. Unless you're using something to split the wood so that it follows the grain, you're going to end up breaking your staffs off because they're going to go, the grain's probably not going to run perpendicular to the stick. We get that in there and we decide how long we want it. And we'll cut it off. So now he's got a little staff. Now if you wanna spend a little more time, get a little fancier, you can carve a little ball to stick on top of the staff. Or these are the ones I like, they got like a little a little fork at the top of them, a little bit of a, create a more interesting staff. And the one that was originally in this guy got busted. So there's another one, but yeah, put a little staff in their hands. Now, this was one that Michelle painted. She got it all set up with a little, little tag and everything. Small Paisley Santa, 75 bucks. Who the hell would pay 75 bucks for something that's no bigger than a finger? But they sell. So um, she's got him all painted up fancy. He's got a little staff and he's got some little decorative uh, Christmas lights strung together, hanging from his hand. The little Santa wreaths and stuff. Um, we've got drawers over here that are full of crap that was sold um, right after Christmas, everything goes on sale for half off. And, uh, we would go to these places and, and buy all these little accessories to add onto our Santas. Now people would say, Ooh, why don't you just carve them? That's kind of screwy idea to, to, uh, buy stuff to add on little cheap stuff made in Taiwan or wherever it's made. But the, the truth to be known that it would take longer to carve these little trinkets that you add to Santa's than it does to carve the Santa itself. So uh, it would just be stupid for somebody that's doing this to uh, try to put some food on the table and pay the bills. Um, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't make any sense. When you, can, when you can buy a little trinket for, you know, 50 cents for several of them, so uh, yeah, so that's it. So there's the, there's the little Santa guy, um, just a nose coming out near the edge of the hat. And that was, and that came from the Santa heads that I was doing. These are bolo ties that I was carving back in the late eighties and early nineties. Um, 
I was carving tons of these little cowboy bolos uh, or pins or magnets to stick on the refrigerator. Um, and in fact, Dale carved one uh, not too long ago um, on on this site. So, uh, but this, I would do them with no eyes because that's what people were liking. So same thing with this guy, no eyes, they're back under the robe. And if you had a mind to, you could come in and, and create a little interest in the beard with a, with a small veiner or a V tool, but that's not, it's not necessary. Sometimes you do stuff like that and it kind of screws it up. Dave, that little staff that you did with a twig sticking out, a little piece of wood sticking out, was that, you carved that from a big solid piece? Yeah, it's probably one of these. I cut it down and then I set the, I set the uh, fence on the bandsaw and ran it through a half a dozen times. See how it comes out all rough and. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's probably an eighth inch. And I've got an eighth inch going through that way and I turn it and run it through again that way. And then I've got a piece of coarse sandpaper sitting here. And you just kind of give it one of these things. What about the one that has a little twig sticking out of it? Uh, this one? Is that the little one? The oh, little this little one. one. This yeah. one here. Yeah, I mean, that's just a, a, a stick off from a bush that. Oh, okay was outside the motorhome somewhere. Probably cool. picked it up off the ground while I was walking the dogs. Yeah. Um, and I stick them in my pocket and bring them home. And then she yells at me, she would yell at me because they'd end up in the dryer. Oh. Basket. Um, you know, if you, if you wanted to knock this down with your knife and, and just start carving the corners off from the stick, instead of using the sandpaper, you can do that. But at some point in time, you're gonna, whoops, start going against the grain. So you gotta go the other way. And then by the time you get it carved, or if your knife's good and sharp, and it just kinda, kinda catches the grain, then all of a sudden, oop, it's gone. So, you know, you. It, to me, it's just a whole lot easier to just use a piece of sandpaper to knock these down if you're going to carve them. And with that one stick I had, that was long enough to do two or, two or three of these things. But they go really fast so that you can knock them out quick. You can put them in your pocket. You can carry them around with you. Um, you get them painted. You're going to go do a show or something. They don't take up much room. Put them in a box. I used to love... I used to love to, to set up with Jack Price. Jack did all the compact characters and uh, he'd go to a show and he'd have, he'd have his entire display stored in a cigar box. And that, that would consist of maybe 60 carvings. And uh, back when I first met Jack, he was selling them for 10 bucks a piece. And uh, I think today he's still selling them but he's probably asking more like 20 bucks for him. But you go to a you go to a Jack Price class and he'd give you he'd give you a blank which was a, a little stick that was about 2 inches long and about an inch by inch maybe 3 quarters of an inch uh, by by 2 or 3 inches and that was your blank and he'd charge you 50 cents for him. And I convinced him that it was crazy to charge 50 cents. He had to keep making change. And all the quarters he had to he had to collect because everybody wanted to pay with a dollar. I said, just charge him a dollar. He says, it's not worth the dollar. I said, charge a damn dollar, they'll pay it, and you won't have to make change. And uh, he said, yeah, but some of them will buy two if I charge them a fifty cents. So, you know, it, go figure the logic. Uh, Dave. Yeah. 
I got a little tool here. I'm going to try showing you. I don't know if it'll show up, but it's. A, can you guys see that? What it is is a dog toenail cleaner or clipper. I um, might have a spotlight yet. I can't see it. And um, that's a cut. You got it cut off for a twig. Or here. And okay. Um, okay. I got a bunch of stuff in front of me. Let's see. <laughs> Where is? <laughs> there it is. No. Not to raise it up. Yep, there we go. Okay, it's a uh, a trimmer for dog uh, nails. Yeah, and if you get it up here, am I high enough? Yeah, and just a little cut like that, and it's cuts for twigs. And I use it when I'm putting uh, making uh, golf golf ball carvings, and I want to put a on a tee in that. And I just measure it, and they just slip it instead of trying to go with the knife all the time. Just thought I'd throw it out, Chuck. I know I'm a beginner. <laughs> That's cool if you got a pair of dog clippers with you, but I don't carry around dog clippers very far with me. Not well, much. you put it in your toolbox. <laughs> yeah, but when I'm out getting sticks, I'm not carrying my toolbox with me. I'm out for a walk or, you know. It fits in your pocket pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a good idea but i probably won't do it okay i just wanted to throw it out there <laughs> <laughs> thank you no i appreciate it i do something to think about so that's it that's all i got to show you i'm not going to paint now well thank you dave for coming almost on. Took two hours yeah that's okay we, we got all, all, all the time we need okay. Uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, again, join us next week and we'll have Kevin Applegate on. Uh, don't forget Dave Stetson's class is coming up uh, in a few weeks. Uh, if you want to join that class, reach out to him and sign up. Uh, also, don't forget about the Wood Carving Academy. Uh, reach out to Yaron if you uh, need to get up with him to talk about the academy. And I think Dave's holding up some of the heads there that he's working on. So uh, uh, join us in that class when you get a chance. And uh, again, the one that he's holding there, I think he said is going to be uh, early next year. So that'll be the next one in line. Um, you want to say a little bit about that, Dave? You're muted. You got to unmute, Dave. Yeah, okay. So this is a fiddler from 2014. Uh, it was one I did at Doan College in Crete, Nebraska one summer. And uh, that was the only time I did it. So uh, we're gonna see if uh, Sid can find the rough out for it and run some more. And if Dwayne will sell them, we'll do this for the next cl next class after the heads. So Sounds good, we look forward to it. This will be coming from a rough out. Thanks, All right, Dwayne. Well, thank you for joining us today and uh, we'll get together again next Saturday at 3 p.m. Thank you all for your time. Thank you.